You know, this film was mostly non-verbal. You could hear some French. And I'm sure that you noticed that there were a lot of locations, a lot of scenes, fair amount of actors, and even some special effects. So this was not a low budget film. I thought that uh, the use of the balloon as, as kind of a, a symbol was what raised this film to the next level. And I think we should all strive to do that as filmmakers. What was that ending all about? You know, where the, the balloons all came to that boy? Wow. I mean, that was an amazing, amazing scene. Now, of course, the way that they did that was they actually released some balloons and then they ran that clip in reverse. Wow! They knew how to do that back in 1956? You know, the principles of filmmaking really haven't changed that much. The next film that I want to talk about was truly a groundbreaker, and I think that a lot of you have already seen it. It was called An Occurrence at Owl Creek Bridge. In the native tongue, La Rivière du Ibo. And if you haven't figured it out by now, all of these films that I picked out, including one more that we're going to review down the road later on, they were all French films. Now, this 1962 film or movie made such an impact that it has been remade many times. And you will see this when you go over to YouTube and do a search on it because a whole bunch of remakes are going to come back as results from your search. I am going to ask that you stop this channel once again, pause it, go over to YouTube and watch this film. Watch the original version. Don't bother with the remakes. You know, I don't know why so many people felt like they needed to remake this film, but I think that's how powerful the film was. I recall watching this film when I was a junior in high school, and I have to admit that even back then, I, I don't think I watched the original. I think I was watching a remake. Now think about that. You know, high school, for me, I mean, we're talking about the Cretaceous period, really. And even back then, they were already making remakes of this film. Well, remake or not, uh, I was really shocked at the ending when I first saw this film. And uh, I didn't know anything about it before I watched it. Um, it was something that I did not expect. You know, this was another big budget short film, and I believe it won a major award at the Cannes Film Festival in 1962. Now, this story was actually written by an American, Ambrose Pierce, and it was published back in 1890, and it was more or less set in the American Civil War time period. Once again, there's almost no dialogue in this film, but this movie made such a powerful statement that productions like The Sixth Sense, the original Magnum P.I. series, and even Lost, borrowed some story structure from this short movie that was made decades earlier. Why did this movie capture our imagination? Well, I think it was because it dealt with the moments just before death. And, you know, what, what goes through our minds at that point? Are we really able to review our lives at that point, or does everything just go black? It's kind of a scary thought, and you know, it's a type of thing that we try to avoid thinking about because it really does make us feel uncomfortable. But here is this movie that brings this issue to our eyes, and then it just dumps it right in our lap. You know, I thought that um, this would have been a perfect vehicle to show the man's soul ascending into heaven. But that didn't happen, did it? There was no hint of the afterlife in this film. Death was final. 
whoa. You know, this film chose to break one of the cardinal rules of filmmaking. This film had a very unsatisfying ending. Quite a difference from the red balloon. Wouldn't you agree? Okay, let's do a quick review on how these films stacked up on production values. You know, as expected, there, there really weren't any problems. Focus, uh, lighting, uh, steadiness, no issues at all. Uh, colors, colors. You know, it was very interesting to see uh, what they did in the red balloon. It was in color, but the colors were muted and they were muted because what was supposed to stand out? It was the red balloon and the balloons that came later on in the, in the film. Uh, that red balloon was a center of attention in every single scene. Sound. Yeah, that was kind of interesting, wasn't it? Yeah. How do you make sure that sound does not become a stumbling block for your film? You make sure that nobody talks. Now, what was the purpose of expounding on these films? Well, there's three reasons. Um, number one, no matter how much the quality of production matters, the quality of script matters even more. These two stories showed that it's all about the story, the story, and the story. They were both very unusual stories, weren't they? The critics certainly thought so. The second reason is that I did want to show you that it is possible to sell your short film. You know, these two films landed distribution deals and they were sold mainly, I guess, to educational systems. Now, could you sell your short film? Well, it is very rare, but in these two cases, they showed that it is possible. Now, did they make millions? Oh, I don't think so. But they did get distribution. Another reason, the third reason, why I wanted to go over these films was the obvious common thread that they both had. You know, there was very limited or little dialogue. What did we say filmmaking was? It tells stories visually. You know, these two short films may have just been short films, but they were actually major undertakings. Think of how you would do your film if you couldn't have any dialogue. And for that matter, how does your film compare to these two? My films depend on a lot of dialogue. I mean a lot of dialogue. I think a lot of filmmakers, or even most filmmakers, are in the same boat. Could I do a movie if my main character was a deaf mute? I'm not sure I could. And you know, <clears throat> actually there's a, there's a hidden reason why I wanted to talk about uh, these two films, as well as the future one. That we're going to do later on. You know, if you watch these films and you could not figure out why they were considered special, wow. All I have to say is best of luck on your filmmaking journey. <laughs>